Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Indizor Education. Um, I would like to do some calculations related to uh, launching satellites today. Very, very simple, very basic calculations. We are talking only about the speed of the satellite, uh, which is rotating around the planet. And uh, I need that speed, basically, based on certain parameters. So, um, we have a few laws, basically two laws, and both are related to Sir Isaac Newton. Okay, one law is the gravity gravitation law. If you have two objects, now we are talking about ideal situations when both objects are uh, either point masses or spherical uh, with uh, center c center of the of the gravity inside in the center of the sphere. Now the um, Newton's law, gravitation law says the following. Hope it's familiar to you. So this is the gravitational constant, universal constant. This is the mass of the planet. This is the mass of satellite. And this is the radius from a center to a center. Uh, center of the planet to center of the satellite. The radius of orbit, uh, we want that satellite to be uh, rotating around the planet. So it includes actually the size of the planet. So it's from a center of the sphere of the planet to a center of the satellite. So we know this. Great. This is the force which acts on a satellite when it's rotating. Now, if that would be the only force, then the satellite would just fall on the planet. Now, we have to launch it so it goes around the planet with a certain speed. And um, considering this is a circular orbit, there is a centripetal acceleration. And if there is a centripetal acceleration, it must be centripetal force, which is basically equal to this one. So these are two different kind of tendencies which are acting on the, same, um, on the same object and it's just two different ways of calculating this because if you would like to, if, you, if this is the planet and this is the orbit, if there is no centripetal force the satellite would go uh, along the tangential line. So there might be a force which pulls it in, and that's a centripetal force. And since this is the actually the, the source of this force, we are equalizing centripetal force, which can be calculated as m times a, where a is centripetal acceleration. And this one, these are the same forces, just calculated from two different uh, viewpoints. This is from the viewpoint of the gravitation law, and this is from the viewpoint of pure uh, movement laws, kinematics, if you wish, because acceleration is a kinematic characteristic. Okay, so what is A? We are talking about the speed, linear speed. The uh, satellite is supposed to be circulating um, the planet. So how the speed is related to acceleration? So we're talking about linear speed. Well, I think we did calculate it uh, a, a few times, but um, in, in, in any case, basically let me just write it down. A is equal to v squared divided, uh, sorry, v squared, yes, v squared divided by r. Um, now, how to obtain this formula? It's very easy. Uh, if you have a circular motion, the best uh, and probably easier way is to describe x and y characteristics uh, of this. It's r uh, cosine omega t, and this is r sine omega t. Now, 
uh, the speed is the first derivative, right? So the first derivative is um, I, I, I'm using something from the calculus, but basically that that's um, some something which people did many many times before. The first derivative is what from a cosine is minus uh, r omega sine omega t from y is sine is a cosine, so it's r internal cosine omega t. The second derivative, which gives me the acceleration, it's minus r omega square cosine omega t, and y is equal to minus r omega square sine uh, omega t. Acceleration is equal the length of this vector, vector of acceleration by coordinates, which gives me r omega square. And linear speed is equal to radius times um, angular speed, right? So from this, acceleration is equal to r omega square omega is equal to v uh, divided by r, so it's v squared divided by r squared, and we have formula, as I said. Now, it's a very, very quick derivation. Uh, in any case, that's uh, supposed to be addressed in uh, kinematics of rotation, which we already covered it before. So, this is equal to m v squared divided by r, okay? Now, this is the same force, so I'm just equalizing them. And that's where we are getting the speed. Now, what's absolutely amazing, at least for me, is this. So it doesn't depend on the mass of the satellite. It depends only on the radius. V square is equal to G times M divided by R. And V is equal to square root of G M divided by R. Where G is gravitational constant, M is the planet mass, and R is the radius distance between the center of the planet and, and the set center of satellite. So this is the speed which we have to really give to uh, a satellite, like a push. So whenever the, um, the engine of a uh, rocket uh, brings the satellite to a proper distance from the planet, then it should turn and push it with this speed. As soon as the speed is sufficient, uh, you can turn off the engine. Now, this is a very complicated process because to first you have to really bring the satellite up. Now, that actually depends on the mass. I mean, the heavier the satellite, the more difficult it is to bring it up to the orbit. The engine must be much stronger. Um, and then you have to really turn it in such a way that it retains the distance needed for you and then goes. Um, okay. What else can be derived from this? Well, actually we can derive the period. Now, period is the time it circulates around the planet. So, what is the period? If we have the speed, now, the distance we also have, the distance is 2 pi r, right? So we divide 2 pi r, t is equal by speed, and what do we have? We have 2 pi uh, r, and v goes another way around, so it's r divided by gm. Or we can 
we can put r inside the square root, it will be square root of r to the third degree divided by gm. Okay, now gm has nothing to do with general motors, it's the gravitational constant and the mass. The greater the mass, with the same radius, the faster it should actually rotate, obviously, because the mass is pushing, uh, pu uh, pulling the, uh, the satellite stronger if it has a uh, bigger mass. So that's basically it. That's all I wanted to say about the speed and the period of a satellite which is freely, without any engine working, freely rotating around the Earth. It's supposed to be somehow calculated if you want to launch a satellite on a specific orbit. Okay, I suggest you to read the notes for this lecture, which is presented on unisor.com. Uh, the course is called Physics for Teens, and it's mechanics about gravitation. You will find this lecture. Thank you very much, and good luck.